All right, this poem is called Snow White and the Seven Deadly Sins. It is by R.S. Gwynn. And, uh, yeah, I made this screencast. So cool. Good Catholic girl, she didn't mind the cleaning. All of her household chores at first were small, and hardly labors one could find demeaning. One's duty was one's refuge, after all. And if she had her doubts at certain moments, and once confessed them to the Father, she was instantly referred to texts in Romans, in Peter's first epistle, chapter 3. Years passed. More sinful every day. The seven breakfasted, grabbed their pitchforks, donned their horns, and sped to contravene the hopes of heaven, sowing the neighbor's lawns with tears and thorns. She set to work. Pride's wall of looking glasses ogled her dimly, smeared with prints of lips. Lust magazines lay strewn, bare tits and asses weighted by his devices, chains, cuffs, whips. Gluttony's empties covered half the table, mingling with avarice's cards and chips, and she'd been told to sew a bill blast label inside the blazer envied bought at gifs. She knelt to the cold master bathroom floor as if a petitioner before the Pope, retrieving several pairs of sloth soiled drawers, a sweat sock, and a cake of hairy soap. Then, as she wiped the Windex from the mirror, she noticed, and the vision made her cry, how much she'd grayed and paled, and how much clearer festered the bruise of wrath beneath her eye. No poisoned apple needed for this princess, she murmured, making X's with her thumb. Her car door slammed, bringing her to her senses. Ho-hum, ho-hum, it's home from work we come. And she was out the window in a second, in time to see a handsome prince, of course, who, spying her distressed condition, beckons for her to mount, what else, his snow-white horse. Impeccably, he spoke. His smile was glowing. So debonair, so charming, and so male. She took a step, reversed, and, without slowing, beat it to St. Anne's, where she took the veil. Alright, so most people are familiar with the story of Snow White. Um, I mean, it's pretty, pretty standard. I mean, there's Evil Queen, uh, Mirror, yeah, all that stuff. So basically, Evil Queen asks the mirror who's the prettiest person in the land. Uh, mirror says Snow White. Queen gets pissed. Uh, she sends a huntsman out to kill Snow White. The huntsman doesn't. Snow White finds these seven dwarves who basically say, hey, if you cook and clean for us, uh, we'll keep you safe. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty well-known story. Uh, so basically, the question is, how does this poem connect to the actual fairy tale that the Brothers Grimm wrote. And so, um, when we look at that, first we have to know what's actually going on in this poem. Snow White starts off the story, in the poem at least, as quote-unquote good Catholic girl. So, basically she is the innocent, you know, virgin, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's Snow White. Uh, she didn't mind the cleaning. All her household chores at first were small. Hardly they were one find a meaning. So basically, that means that uh, Snow White has a job. And the point of what she's doing right now is that her job is something that she should be proud of. And she is saved by doing work. Um, at times, as we move on, she has doubts about what she's doing. Um, she maybe doesn't like cleaning or cooking or whatever, she takes it up with uh, the father of the church who tells her to reread Romans and Peter's first epistle, which are parts of the Bible, which we'll talk about later. Uh, years passed, more sinful every day, the seven breakfasted. So basically this just talks about how the dwarves live their lives. So all these paragraphs here concern the injustices that the dwarves have uh, place on Snow White. Um, so basically, she's just abused, abused again, abused, 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 abused. Yeah, seven abuses. So by the end, Snow White basically says, you know what, I'm done with this. Uh, it doesn't really matter what my father says. Um, she's out the window in time to see handsome prince. Yay, prince charming. And obviously, I guess we'll take it literally right now. Um, with the whole horse thing. I guess I'll talk about that later. But um, he says, yeah, come with me. And Snow White just says, ha, no. Beat it to St. Anne's where she took the veil, so she becomes a nun. And, uh, yeah, that's basically what's happened here. So obviously this is a very religious poem. 
uh, you start off with the first three words, good Catholic girl, boom, you know this is going to be about, you know, something to do with religion. And then, obviously, the original fairy tale has so much uh, allusion to the whole good versus evil plot with Snow White being innocent, um, virginal, as I said before, and then the queen just being really mean. And so, um, we move forward. She goes to her father about the work that they're having her do, and she is referred to texts in Romans in Peter's first epistle, chapter 3. These parts of the Bible um, basically describe what one's duty should be in different roles. So here's an excerpt from Peter's first epistle. It says, Wives, be ruled by your husbands, so that even if some of them give no attention to the world, their hearts may be changed by the behavior of their wives. And then, dot, 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 more quotes. Uh, because if it is God's purpose for you to undergo pain, it's better to do so for well-doing than for evil-doing. So basically, as far as this refers to Snow White, it's saying that um, it's her job to undergo this pain because she is helping out other people. Um, she needs to do this because it's God's will. It's what God wants. And no matter what Snow White may want herself, this is what's going to happen. As we move on to the next stanza, we get our first italicized word, seven. Um, obviously, this is a very biblical number. There's seven days in the week. Uh, seven is supposed to symbolize perfection, although <coughs> as far as the dwarves go, there isn't really much perfection there. Um, they refer to the seven deadly sins, another biblical reference. Um, but maybe the seven is supposed to contradict, maybe, bring out the contrast between Snow White and the dwarves because Snow White is so perfect and the dwarves are so just no, you know? So um, scroll down a little bit and finally we meet the dwarves. We have pride, lust, gluttony, avarice, envy, sloth, and wrath. And so, I mean, this illusion has been made before this poem, but basically each thing that happens, um, you know, there's pride looking at himself. There's lust being a um, sexual deviance, gluttony, eating everything, uh, greed, gambling. So um, all these instances are references to the seven deadly sins, bad things. Uh, not real. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's see. We get to more the bottom of the poem. At this point, Snow White has suffered a great deal of abuse. Um, so basically, there's no evil queen in this poem, but it doesn't really matter because either way, Snow White has just been beaten up and abused and tortured and whatever. So no poisoned apple needed for this princess, obviously an allusion to the fairy tale where Snow White is put to sleeping death by an apple given to her by the evil queen. Uh, let's see, car door slammed, bringing her to her senses, ho-hum, ho-hum, it's home from work we come. At this point, this is where I put the shift in the poem, right, right there, there's a shift. Because before Snow White is doing her duty, and she's trying to be a good Catholic, and here is where she finally snaps. Like, you, you get a sense in the stanza before the shift that, you know, she's not happy, but boom, at this point, from down, she's gone. Now, what happens here um, is an issue that's been up for debate with a couple people I've talked to. And she was out the window in a second, in time to see a handsome prince, of course, who, spying her distressed condition, beckoned for her to mount, what else, his Snow White horse. So, what happened there? I think it's sex. I mean, you read between the lines, and there's a bunch of things to suggest maybe it is. And... If you read it that way, then it makes sense because maybe this brings out some kind of guilt and that's what possesses her to take the veil in the last stanza and become a nun. Um, maybe it's, you know, sort of like 
it brings out the hypocrisy of the whole situation because Snow White is supposed to be this good Catholic who's been surrounded by sins this whole time, and now she's the one engaging in premarital sex, and she is, you know, lusting and greeting and whatever. And so that's a bit of, you know, and then... Oh, let's see. Impeccably, he spoke. His smile was glowing. So debonair, so charming, and so male. She took a step, reversed, and without slowing, beat it to St. Anne's where she took the veil. So at the end, this might be a feminism thing. It might be, um, you know, sometimes you need to distance yourself from things that you want, things that are fun, things that are, that are things that you desire in order to achieve sanctity um, in order to faithfully execute your religious beliefs. The, uh, the rhyme scheme we got going here is uh, sort of in, let's see, am I not writing? Oh, there we go. A, B, A, B. Um, cleaning, small, demeaning, after all, moments. She uh, Romans 3. So basically, yeah, we have an ABAB thing going. Um, the only real purpose I can think as to why this happens is just to make it seem more like a fairy tale, even though the stuff going on in this poem is much more adult than any child might comprehend. Um, but yeah, it's just, it helps to bring out those fairy tale uh, elements from which the poem takes its name. Uh, so the point of this poem, well, I guess the point of any poem really is to try and find a theme, uh, something that, you know, you can take away at the end of the poem. So I've come up with a list of, you know, possible themes that, I don't know, agree or disagree, whatever, I don't really care. So, <laughs> anyways, um, one possible thing is that maybe sinning leads to more sinning. Yay. Um, how I got this was because... Snow White chooses to surround herself with these dwarves who just, they're really very awful people. And so um, at the end of the book, you know, depending on the way you interpret it, Snow White could be, you know, having sex with this handsome prince just out of spite. And like in the Christian religion, you know, the whole sex before marriage thing is a big deal. So maybe it's sinning leads to more sinning. That's a possibility. Um, second thematic possibility, one's duty should be to the church first, which, you know, I guess that's a very easy way to look at it. Um, you know, obviously at the end of the book she becomes a nun. Uh, possibility number three, it is possible to live a life of purity in a world full of sin. Um, so even though Snow White is surrounded by these seven sinning dwarves, she still manages to rise above and become a nun and fulfill herself. And then this is maybe a stretch, but maybe it's a poem about female empowerment because, you know, at the beginning of the poem, it's like cleaning and cooking should be her job. Yay. But then it's like, no, I don't want to cook and clean. I want to do what I want to do. But then she becomes a nun, and I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure she wants to become a nun. So that's maybe why that one is a stretch. Um, what I'm leaning towards most is um, the third one, I think. It's possible to live a life of purity in a world full of sin uh, just because it makes sense with the rest of the poem. And uh, so yeah, that is basically Snow White and the Seven Deadly Sins in about, I don't know, a little under 15 minutes. Wonderful.